For many, Kevin Smith is a filmmaker who once upon a time made really great movies, while many others have stuck by his side through thick and thin. With Clerks 3 wrapping up the story 30 years in the making, it's time we look back at one of the most iconic, revolutionary, groundbreaking careers in independent film history and find out just what the f happened to Kevin Smith. <laughs> but to truly understand what the f happened to Kevin Smith, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1970, New Jersey. Kevin Smith has said that seeing his father struggle with his job working at the post office made him vow to never work a job that he hated. Easier said than done, but that's what Kevin Smith does. He gets things done. But he never really thought there was a future for someone like him in the film industry, despite his massive love of movies. A great movie can change lives, and for Kevin Smith, that movie happened to be Richard Linkletter's cult classic Slacker. Smith said that this film showed him that movies could be made anywhere, not just on Hollywood sound stages. He credits the work of Richard Linkletter with lighting the fuse in him to be a filmmaker, something that he had always wanted to do but never thought was possible. So Kevin Smith would enroll in the Vancouver Film School where he met Scott Mosier. But Kevin Smith wasn't really happy at film school. He felt like he was spending all of that money to learn how to make films when he could be spending that money on actually making films. So after a few short months, Smith decided to leave the school and head back to New Jersey. Before leaving, him and his pal Mosier made a pact. Whoever writes a script first, the other one must drop everything and go help them get it made. Well, it just so happens that when Kevin Smith moved to Jersey, he took his old job working at the local convenience store, and he would use the exploits of working in that store as the basis for his first feature-length script, titled Inconvenient, or as it would later be retitled, Clerks. The story of Clerks is one of the most inspirational stories in all of independent cinema. Kevin Smith, an avid comic book collector, sold his entire collection to help fund his debut, while also maxing out every credit card he owned. This would result in a budget of $27,575. And of course, in today's world, you could definitely shoot a movie like Clerks for way under that budget by utilizing digital technology. But back in the early 90s, if you wanted to make a movie, you needed to purchase film stock. And film stock ain't cheap. Kevin Smith would save money by hiring a cast and crew of his friends and would film the movie in the middle of the night after he had worked a full day's shift in the store. The result would be one of the biggest, most respected independent films ever released. With the success of Clerks, Kevin Smith was courted by major studios, leading him to make his highly anticipated follow-up, Mallrats, at Universal Studios, with a budget of over $5 million. Despite the movie Mallrats being absolutely hilarious, it seemed like regular audiences, the normies or whatever, just weren't ready for the humor of Kevin Smith, as it only managed 2.1 million in total at the box office. Once Mallrats hit home video, though, it exploded, developing a very devoted cult following. And it was one of the earlier roles of Ben Affleck, and was a cinematic universe before that was even a thing, as the events in Mallrats would directly reference those in Clerks. A shared cinematic universe. I think they call it the View askew or something? The failure of Mallrats hit Kevin Smith pretty dang hard, and for his next film, he went back to his indie roots, where he would secure a budget of just 500000 to film Chasing Amy, which would reunite his Mallrat stars, Jason Lee, Ben Affleck, and Kevin Smith's former girlfriend, Joey Lauren Adams. It would seem smaller budgets is where Kevin Smith truly shines, as Chasing Amy would go on to gross over $12 million at the box office, 
and it would receive much critical praise, with Kevin Smith winning the Independent Spirit Award for Best Screenplay. So yeah, even more studios were even more interested in Kevin Smith typing up their scripts. And of course, he would be hired to write that infamous Nicolas Cage Superman film that never happened. And Kevin Smith talking about the failure of that Superman movie is probably way more entertaining than that movie ever had a chance at being. At this point, Kevin Smith had gotten into producing movies, mainly just to help his friends get their work made. This included his now good friend Ben Affleck, who had written a script with his good friend Matt Damon. And that would win them a frickin' Oscar. Yep, Kevin Smith was vital to getting Good Will Hunting made. Of course, Kevin Smith would capitalize on their friendship and cast Damon and Affleck in his next film, Dogma. It's a blasphemous, hilarious flick about two fallen angels. This would be Kevin Smith's first brush with the craziness that is people protesting one of his movies. Because they just don't understand. But of course, this satirical look at religion received heavy picketing from many members of many church groups. Kevin Smith would even receive death threats. But that didn't stop him. And in true Kevin Smith spirit, he joined the picket line and protested his own movie. Dogma would gross nearly 50 million off a 10 million dollar budget, and would return Kevin Smith to the Independent Spirit Awards where he was nominated for Best Screenplay. And there was the short-lived Clerks the Animated Series, but Kevin Smith would bring those iconic characters of Jay and Silent Bob back to the forefront in a huge way with the film Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back which would be like his magnum opus when it comes to his cinematic universe. It's a Kevin Smith movie about Kevin Smith movies, and this was actually the first Kevin Smith movie I ever saw, so I was like, I don't understand what's going on, but I like it. The film Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back would be given a hefty $22 million budget, but could only secure around $34 million in the worldwide box office. Fuck. Kevin Smith says this movie about Kevin Smith movies was one of the hardest movies he's ever had to make. Because at the time, his hetero life mate, Jason Mewes, was in the dangerous clutches of addiction. And Jason Mewes was having mood swings and bouts of severe anger. Kevin Smith said that once filming wrapped, he told Jason Mewes that he needed to get sober or he would never speak to him again. A real life Silent Bob. And you know what? Jason Mewes, he got help. He got sober. And of course, he has had a few bumps in the road along the way, but nothing like his addictions back during making this film. And as of today, right now, Jason Mewes has celebrated over 12 years of sobriety. Stand there and react. Don't say anything. Especially you. All right, people. That's pretty funny. After scoring a cameo in his buddy Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie, Kevin Smith would bring the power couple of Affleck and Jennifer Lopez together for his first PG-13 rated directorial effort, titled Jersey Girl. Despite the film featuring two of the biggest stars on the planet, Ben Affleck and J-Lo, even though she like dies in the beginning, she dies in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. But unfortunately, at that time, their relationship, the, the first time they were having one, was splashed all over the tabloids, and you know, it was, it was annoying. Unfortunately, this movie Jersey Girl would suffer from being related to the Ben Affleck J-Lo thing, wrongfully tying it to the disastrous Geely. But Jersey Girl is a movie that's actually a very sweet tale of a father who's suffered a horrific loss and has to pick up the pieces of his life, not just for himself, but for his daughter who looks like a young J-Lo. Kevin Smith has actually teased an extended cut of Jersey Girl. Jersey Girl, the director's cut. 
Redux, saying that he actually hopes to release it one day, and maybe then it will be fairly judged, now that we've gotten over that Geely thing. Oh. Oh. He would also pop up in a romantic comedy with Jennifer Garner, who was the second Benifer in that movie Catch and Release, and Kevin Smith was very involved in The Flash TV show. In 2006, he would release his first sequel, Clerks 2. And not only is it absolutely hilarious, with the same type of biting dialogue that you would expect from a Clerk sequel, but it also successfully hits you in the heart towards the end of the film, which is quite an accomplishment considering the horrendously grotesque stuff that goes down in this movie. Ah! But yeah, this time it would be in color and would be shot with more expensive cameras, which actually takes away the charm of the first movie. But the spirit of Clerks is in Clerks 2. Clerks 2 would actually receive some pre-release headlines when it both received an eight-minute standing ovation at Cannes and had famous film critic Joel Siegel rudely and loudly walk out of the film. Clerks 2 was originally called The Passion of the Clerks and would cost five million to make, which is roughly 165 times the cost of the original film, Clerks 1. This sequel was a decent box office hit, pulling in nearly $27 million worldwide. At this point, despite Kevin Smith becoming a legend in the rated R comedy movie field, it would seem like a new breed of rated R comedy movie was becoming popular. And Kevin Smith, he is an artiste who likes to change and evolve with the times, while staying true to himself. But yeah, as you probably remember, at this time, the type of comedy movies that dominated everything were the stoner, improvisational, Judd Apatow type of movies. So Kevin Smith decided to write a film that still had the Kevin Smith vibe while trying to incorporate some of that Apatow style. The result was 2008's Zack and Miri Make a Porno, of course starring Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks. This was the film that Kevin Smith thought would bring him to that first place opening, and he was certain it was gonna make over a hundred million dollars. But after a very confusing, bumpy marketing campaign that saw many of the main channels refuse to even advertise the movie because the word porno is in the title, this Zack and Miri movie, it opened in second place with just 10.7 million and would only make 42.8 million dollars worldwide. For Kevin Smith, the failure of this movie severely depressed him. Not only did it fail to make an impact with mainstream audiences, he felt like he had personally ruined Seth Rogen's career, and kind of put a stop to that genre of comedy. Swallow my cockachino! What? Kevin Smith would then do something that he never thought he would do, direct a film he did not write for a major studio. After having a kind of funny cameo alongside Bruce Willis in Live Free or Die Hard, Kevin Smith and Bruce Willis would reunite for a script titled A Couple of Dicks that would eventually be retitled Cop Out after Kevin Smith thought it was a cop out to change from the original title. Sadly, this was a case of never work with your idols. As Kevin Smith has recounted in many an interview, how much he absolutely hated working with Bruce Willis, saying that Bruce Willis simply did not want to be there. There were counterclaims that at the time Kevin Smith was smoking too much marijuana and was too stoned to be involved as a director should be, to which Kevin Smith countered saying that when he smokes he's actually a better director and works even harder. Bruce Willis and Kevin Smith would eventually bury the hatchet years later, both of them forgiving each other of their trespasses against each other, but not before Combat would totally crash at the box office. 
with just $55.4 million up against a $30 million budget plus marketing costs, so yeah, it didn't make much money, if any. It was at this moment that Kevin Smith realized that his movies were never meant to be huge money makers. He has his loyal audience, and those people are the ones who are going to pay to see Kevin Smith movies. So he's only going to focus on them. That same year, in 2010, Kevin Smith would turn his gift for Gab, something that he had perfected over the years with his sold-out live Q&As, into one of the most successful podcast empires ever. I think it's kind of funny that the guy who played Silent Bob is actually famous for his talking. Kevin Smith actually said that he doesn't really think of himself as a filmmaker. He now thinks of himself as a podcaster who sometimes gets to make movies. But yeah, not only would his weekly podcast Chit Chat spawn one of the biggest podcast networks around, it would also bring forth some new movie ideas. In 2011, Kevin Smith would return to Sundance to sell his newest project, a film that returned him to his humble, low-budget roots. But this one was a complete left turn for Smith. It was a horror film that was basically the Westboro Baptist Church meets the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, titled Red State. The film, and Kevin Smith himself, would garner lots of headlines at the annoyance of many studios when he pretended to hold an auction for the film after its Sundance screening. You know, so potential studios could bid on the movie and buy it. So all these fat cat producers and investors were standing around in the cold, and then comes Kevin Smith, and he buys the film himself for one dollar as he announces his newly formed production studio. Many film buyers did not appreciate this ruse, saying that Kevin Smith had intentionally wasted their time because he had absolutely no intention of selling the movie. And apparently he gave a speech that came off as very self-righteous. Almost like he had forgotten who he was and where he came from. You know, the mother-effing independent king of cinema. But whatever, mother lived long enough to become the villain. Just for a moment. For his part, Kevin Smith took this film Red State on a road show, where he would do a live Q&A after screenings for his devoted fans. This, of course, was a direct result of his disillusionment with the corporate bureaucracy of the studio movie-making system. He figured instead of spending double a film's budget on marketing, he could just market it directly to his fans because those were the only people who were going to see it anyway. And he could recoup any minuscule budget that the film had. And you know what? The strategy worked. Those Red State Roadshows, they were able to pay back all of the financing for the film and then some. Once again, Kevin Smith doing something revolutionary for the art of cinema and marketing. Praise the name! Praise the name! After writing Jay and Silent Bob's super groovy cartoon movie, Kevin Smith would continue to experiment with some offbeat films, like the film Tusk, where Justin Long gets turned into a walrus. And this story right here was actually inspired by a funny conversation Kevin Smith was having on his podcast. Tusk features an unrecognizable performance by Johnny Depp and would premiere at the Toronto Film Festival, where it would win the runner-up Midnight Madness People's Choice Award. And like many other Kevin Smith movies, Tusk has gained a pretty big cult following over the years. And Kevin Smith says that he's actually ready to roll on a Tusk sequel. Tusk would introduce two convenience store workers played by his daughter named Harley Quinn and Johnny Depp's daughter, Lily Rose. Smith was really impressed with these daughters and he wanted to give his daughter her own feature film. So he would write the frickin' mess of a movie, Yoga Hosers. This silly, stupid movie would feature Bratzies, which are little Nazi bratwursts, which were played by Kevin Smith himself. For film critics and Kevin Smith's lifelong loyal fans, the movie represents a step too far and has little to no redeeming value. This one never really became a cult classic and has largely been forgotten. It's just too f***ing silly. Kevin Smith would then take some time off from making movies to focus on his podcasts and live shows. 
because he's a freaking genius at telling stories about himself and his crazy adventures in the movie making industry. But on the evening of February 25th, 2018, Kevin Smith was recording two shows when in between the shows, Kevin Smith had to lay down on the ground as he wasn't feeling very well. After being rushed to the hospital, it was reported by Kevin Smith himself the very next day that he had suffered a massive heart attack, the kind that kills 90% of the people who have them. From that day forward, Kevin Smith would join his daughter as a vegan, and he would become like a fitness fanatic. He became one of those health nuts, you know, in a, in a good way, because he, he needed to. If you look at pictures of Kevin Smith from when he came on the scene, to how he looks today, he's a totally different person. And of course, around this time, Kevin Smith began to rethink his life, and his goals, and his dreams, and his legacy, and, you know, being alive. And he missed making movies. So he would begin writing a new film in the view askew verse called Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. This would be released in 2019 and parody the recent craze of rebooting and sequelizing old properties. He would again take this film on the road, marketing it directly to his fans, and that plan it worked again as the film would secure the second highest per screening average of 2019. He would then follow that up with a movie called Kilroy Was Here, that I don't know anyone who's even seen it because for some insane reason it was released strictly as an NFT. The first feature length film to be released that way. I guess that's revolutionary too, but uh. But the biggest effect the heart attack had on his professional career was a script that Kevin Smith had written called Clerks 3. And Kevin Smith says that he's very thankful, very grateful, that he actually waited so long to make Clerks 3. The idea just wasn't there yet, and it just didn't feel like a Clerks movie. And I guess that's why actor Jeff Anderson refused to make the film, at first. But after Kevin Smith's massive heart attack, when he was like, dancing around with death, Kevin Smith completely rewrote the script to focus on how having a heart attack changes a person. And that was enough to get actor Jeff Anderson, who plays Randall, can't do it without Randall, to sign on to join the Clerks again. And in 2022, we were gifted with Clerks 3. This film, it worked as a send-off to a beloved character, while also giving us that great dialogue that comes with a Clerks movie. Oh my god. Cut! Of course, for some, new school Kevin Smith movies couldn't really match up to their older counterparts. But for many fans out there, Clerks 3 was an excellent conclusion to the series. Because in many people's hearts, they hold Clerks in a very special place. Because of what the movie represents. And it represents so much. Like the fact that if you have a dream and you work hard towards that dream, you can turn that hard work into a lifetime of great memories and a filmography that is cherished by so many people. A freaking legion of loyal fans whose lives Kevin Smith has changed simply for being himself. This filmmaker, I mean podcaster, is not just the guy who made Clerks or even the guy who made Yoga Hosers. He's the guy who tells his fans in the most hilarious and inspirational way that they can achieve anything they set their minds to and hearts, if their hearts don't attack them. Look at this touchy motherfucker right here. Kevin Smith may have slowed down his output in recent years, but he hasn't slowed down. You can still catch him at live shows around the country, where he tells great stories about his career in the entertainment industry. Wacky, goofy, hilarious, heartwarming tales. And you know what? A uh, spoiler alert for the f***ing Flash, but you can kinda see his version of Nicolas Cage's Superman up on the big screen. So there's that. But my favorite Kevin Smith is the Kevin Smith that cries when he watches a new Star Wars trailer or something. Even though it is kinda cringy sometimes, I love his passion. And that's why nobody should give a f*** about what the f*** happened to Kevin Smith, because Kevin Smith, he's doing just fine.